Hi friends, welcome to my channel. And today I am really excited. We are going to be watercoloring with Rosa Gallery watercolor. And we are going to be doing a very easy beginner friendly sunset. And I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Okay. Now, when we're going to begin, we need a number two pencil or a HB pencil. I'm working on a six by eight fluid watercolor paper. It's on a block. I like the block because um, it's really good for wet on wet. And I like this paper because I can get it at the local art store. I'm going to use my Rosa Gallery paints. I wanted to check them out and give them a try. Okay, so I got a line for the horizon and we're just going to kind of wing it. Let's see what I come up with. Um, we're going to first want to wet our paper and I'm going to be using this a flat watch brush and I have some paper towels ready so I can go ahead and dab if I need to. Making sure my brush is clean. I didn't clean it very good last time I guess very important for brush care especially when you do more than watercolor to make sure your brushes are rinsed good anyway i am taking this princeton flat wash brush it's a princeton neptune and it's a three-fourth quarter you know three-fourth inch so i'm going to go ahead and wet my paper to the line see it still has some of that yellow in it you don't typically want to do that so I'm going to go ahead and wipe that up and continuing on, I guess, cleaning my brush. Okay, let's see. That's better. Okay, now get in the paper. What? We are going to um, use a wet on wet method for the sky and what that is is when your paper is wet and then you're going to put on wet paint. And this is very beginner friendly. So, you can use whatever blue you have. I am going to use some of this ultramarine and cobalt mix. I don't know how, but I had a little piece of paper in there. So, more cobalt than ultramarine. I'm going to take some water. Now remember, since we're using a wet on wet, this is actually going to dry a little lighter, but I want to get um, our paints ready. And then I am going to take a little bit of this areolin and wipe that up because I don't want it to... Um, go green on me. And because we don't want that to go green, we're going to go ahead and have a little bit of a, a buffer. So we're going to take a little bit of this yellow and then we're going to go ahead and take some of this magenta rose and put that in there. And you'll see it's going to work as a buffer. So then I'm going to go ahead and get a smaller brush. I am going to now use a, I think this is like a um, 
half inch and I got it from my local Hobby Lobby but it works pretty good but I'm going to begin by placing this yellow color and I'm going to go up because we're going to work on a gradient and during a sunset it's just the yellows are so vibrant and then we're gonna just kind of work it up now I'm gonna rinse the brush and just taking some water kind of fan it out and then what I'm gonna do rinsing the brush in between taking this magenta rose putting it slightly above the yellow I'm gonna bring that in and bringing it down slightly and go ahead and mix it up a little bit more I'm going to go ahead and take that over because during the sunset, especially during the winter time, I'm finding that there is a good bit of pink in the sky. And then what I like to do is I'm going to bring down some clouds. So I'm going to bring that pink down just a little bit into the yellow. And it's just going to give it a real nice, almost like a cloud appearance. So once again, because we want to move pretty quickly. And if you see your, it's beginning to um, dry. Hopefully I didn't just cause a cauliflower, but if it did, it will show you of what not to do. But trying to work quickly put in some more water on because I do not want it to dry up because that's part of the wet on wet look it's going to give it a very nice soft blend and that's what we want so now starting a little bit above that red or that pink color and then we're going to kind of do the same and move that down but this time working a little bit bigger and slowly getting darker as we move up and this fluid paper trying to mop up because as you can see getting a little bit too much water through here so I'm going to just take the edge of a paper towel and soak it up. Now working at the top is on one of the darkest to be there. And then working down quickly because the paper is really starting to dry. And if it dries too much, you can always let it dry and then re-wet it and use a very soft paintbrush to lightly go over it and then kind of working down on a little bit of clouds and then I think what we're going to do is because I even want to go a little bit darker because it's getting to be you know it's getting to be night oh that's a little bit too much black using that but it has like a bluish tint so then I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of ultramarine and the black we're going to go ahead and make it really dark up here and 
and then so now we're going to go ahead and let that dry. Okay, so now we're back and it's just about dry. It's enough where we can actually move on. And so I want to make sure you're in frame here. Okay. So then what we're going to do is with this blue color, we need to make a neutral. So taking some of this pink, we're going to turn this into a going to go purple and then to neutralize purple because go into our color theory because when you make a lesson within a lesson you can make a neutral out of your three basic primaries of magenta scion which is the blue and the yellow because opposite of purple is yellow on the color wheel and it will neutralize it that's why having uh i'm excited i got the quiller palette because i can it's gonna help with color theory so i'm gonna add some of this yellow and it may not be exactly right but we can get it kind of close so kind of neutralizing that and now going back to some of the blue but I think we're going to go with more of the ultramarine blue. And then some more of the pink. And look at what we got here. A little bit more blue. A little bit more pink. Whoa, too much pink. So we can neutralize that with some yellow. We'll go ahead and take some of this cad yellow. Making it brown, but we want a blue, so going back to blue. And we'll eventually get it going back to there and then once again we need the yellow because we want that purpley ish there now for the first layer because we're going to go darker and darker and darker as we get closer so for this layer we're going to make it and it's not gonna go super dark and we're just gonna take it down and you're gonna see when we take it down the only thing I don't like about this block is that the glue that they use actually sticks but we're gonna take this down like I have said mixing it with some water and then just taking it down I want to take it all the way down to the to the bottom And then once again, letting it dry. Oh, well, fudge. So I think I just lost some footage. I'm not sure. I'll have to go back. But I went ahead and made a darker layer. 
and angled it and then I took some water and feathered it out moving down the page with some water just trying to evenly distribute the water but the layer once again was our same three colors but as in a darker mix so now we're just going to go ahead and quit messing with it i need to take my own advice and leave it alone and then we're going to wait for this layer to dry and then we're going to do one more mountain layer so we will be back okay so now that that's dried we're going to put one more layer of mountain and what i'm going to do is take some yellow Actually, we'll take some of this orzo yellow. And then we're going to take some of this ultramarine blue. And then I want to take a little bit of this yellow ochre. more blue we just want to make sure we have enough um more orzo yellow you just definitely want to make sure of that and then more blue there and then and this, taking some more of that, um, not Orzo Yellow, but Ariel one. I don't know why I'm, I am must have the other one, the brain. Okay, and then we're going to mix up that gray or green. And then we got this, like, muddy colored back here. And that's fine. And then... A little muddy colored back there so now what we're gonna do is take this green kind of mix it with some of this muddy okay So now we're going to go ahead and I want to take this bluish green here a bit more blue because it's still in the distance. So we're going to do this mountain now. And then this is going to even out. Actually, we're going to make it a little bigger. Going down. Because this one is going to be closer to us. So... I want to make sure keeping my head out of the picture Because we're going to end up bringing it down. So, 
I'm gonna make up a little bit more. So taking that areola in. Some of the ultramarine blue. And then yellow ochre because we want to kind of dirty it up. And then we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of the royal brown also. Got one a little bit of wrong one, but that's okay. I'm in a little bit of that. I'm having a little mixture of these colors here. I think we probably are gonna go over this one more time once this is put another layer over this. So I want it to be a little darker green. And then we're gonna add some yellow ochre. And we're gonna add a little bit more colors to this one. So it's almost dried. And then when we do it, we're gonna take it all the way down. So we can probably do it. I just wanna make sure it's, the key is if you're gonna add more color, get ready to, we want to make a pretty thick consistency. This is going to be the one mountain that's closest to us, and then add in some of that yellow. And then, okay, so we got some nice mixes here. So now we're just going to go ahead because it's not dry all the way, but it's close enough. I want the darkest green to be here, but I want to throw some of like that yellow in, throw some of that reddish brown in. Sorry you guys, there's such a glare on this right now, I need to be able to see what I'm doing, so I'm just going to tilt the paper and then work in that brown, oh yeah. That's exactly what we wanted. I want to take some more of that yellow ochre and put in that in. Okay, I want the lighter side of the mountain to be on this side. And then add in some greens. There we go. That's looking a lot better. I had to see. Sorry if I took it out of view. But I needed to see what I was doing and it was hard with the glare from the light and everything. But on this mountain here, we really wanted to. And then what we're also gonna do is kinda up in the distance. Making like it's putting little lines so it kinda looks like little trees. Just kinda dabbing the brush. And I think I want to add a little bit more of this yellow ochre. Make 
making sure I don't have too much water. If you have too much water at this point, it will add a cauliflower. But I wanted to add a little bit of the, more of that yellow ochre. Okay, now bringing the brush down, we're gonna start working on the foreground. Starting with this darker color. And we're gonna have to make up some paint here in a minute, but just kind of blended this down. Taking some of that yellow ochre now, mix and moving down the moving on I'm gonna move on down and as you can see as we're moving towards the bottom of the paper the grass is getting lighter and all that. And we want to take it down to the bottom. And then we'll add some details here in the front. Making a little bit more mixer. Taking a little bit of that yellow ochre towards the front. And then I want to take some tiny little bit of this brownish color. It's kind of reminds me of like a bird sienna. And I want to put that some of that mixture in here too. And then trying to blend that up to that mountain. And that's going to give warm up the front and it's going to appear closer. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to try to do a little scraping. And it's almost too dry to do it. And then blend that out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and squirt it with a squirt bottle. If I can get it to work. Oh, what darn, darn it. So I can't, so instead I guess we'll improvise. But it would be more idea to take a squirt bottle 
but we're gonna lightly wet this mountain. Very lightly, trying not to disturb too much or get it too, too wet for the technique we're gonna get ready to do. So I think I got this a little too dark. And so I wanna scrape. And then I'm gonna take the paper. And we can, we're gonna blend that out in a minute. And then, so what we're gonna do is therefore we're gonna blend it out. But that looks a little bit better. Not as much as the effect I wanted, but that's okay because it's gonna be, we're gonna be put in some stuff in the foreground. And then the other thing that we can do is taking a thirsty brush, which means it's a little damp, cleaning it off and going over it and repeat. Because I don't want that to be so dark. Same thing with here. I want to lighten that. Because I want this side to be a little lighter and the other side to be a little darker. Okay, and I think I'm gonna get a little different brush. Moving on now to this round. Because I still taking a paper towel and then doing some lifting. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. It was just too dark for my liking. And it's darker on that side. Very good. So now it needs to dry some more. And then on the bottom, we'll get another coat ready because I want to put a light coat of the, like a greenish color just to try to even it up some. Taking some blue some yellow ochre. A little areolan. I want it to be a little brighter and vibrant. Okay. That's about what I wanted. So now I got that color mixed up. I'm going to just lightly glaze. And I do mean ever so lightly. Trying to skip some spots. Letting the bits, certain bits poke through. Very good. I'm 
that's very good. So now we're gonna let that dry. And then when we come back, we're gonna put it on and do the last, you know, finishing touches. We're gonna put a little bit of a tree line back here and then put something in the front and it will be done. So, like I said, let this dry and we will be back.